What's going on everybody? This is a video series that I've been wanting to put together for quite some time now. It seems like I get quite a few questions on my YouTube channel and my social media accounts in regards to beginners that are kind of just getting into the sport of bow hunting. So I've been wanting to put together a video series that kind of helps out the beginning bow hunter. So there's gonna be a lot of people that probably won't get a whole lot from this because it is gonna be kind of a high level, but it's strictly just kind of driven towards those beginner bow hunters that don't really know where to start. We all had to start from somewhere. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while now, and I'm still learning all the time. You know, there's all the time new products coming out, new techniques, new ways to do things differently than what you've done in the past. Just never can learn enough about this sport, and that's what makes it so great. So if you guys are interested in this series, make sure you subscribe down below so you get notified whenever I put out the next video in this series. And then I'll just continue to build and, and make a playlist out of all the videos that I put together. This video series will be about bow hunting and it's gonna be in regards to whitetail deer hunting. You have three different choices of what kind of bow you're gonna use. You could use a recurve, you could use a crossbow, and then you could use a compound bow. What I use and what I'm gonna be doing this video series on is in relation to a compound bow. Here in front of me is my compound bow, what I use and what I've been using the past, I think probably three to four years. So this bow is specifically set up for me. If I had friends or family that wanted to come over, pick this bow up, take it outside and shoot it, it would not be anywhere close to set up correctly for them. There's a lot of different characteristics that go into being fit for a bow. What I would highly recommend is that you go in to your local bow shop or Cabela's or Bass Pro. Um, I'm a firm believer in going into your local bow shops. Uh, it seems like I've had a lot of good luck with that in the past. I'm to the point now where I kind of set up my bows myself. If you are just getting started in the sport, I would highly recommend that you go in to your local bow shop and just be straight up front and honest with them. They enjoy helping out new customers. That's what they're there for. That's their area of expertise. Just let them know you're just starting out in bow hunting and you need to get fitted for a compound bow. Um, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take your draw length. They're gonna check to see you know, what you're comfortable with as far as draw weight, uh, poundage. You're gonna be much more accurate. The bow is just gonna be set up exactly to your anatomy, your build. One of the big things, and I'll go into this further on a future video in this series, but one of the big things is making sure that you get the correct draw length. You always wanna make sure that whenever you pull, the, pull this back, you always get the same anchor back here by your chin or your ear. You always wanna have the same anchor. And if you're too far forward, you're not gonna be able to anchor it. And if it's too far back, you're not gonna be able to anchor it back there. So you wanna make sure that you go in, let them know that you're just starting out in the sport. You need to get fitted for a new compound bow and you need to get your draw length measured. And then you need to see how much poundage you're comfortable with. Uh, I shoot 60 and 70 pound limbs. I like to target practice a lot around 60 to 65. And then right before season, I'm, I crank these down all the way and shoot it at 70 pounds. Bows are so extremely advanced these days, you don't need to shoot 70 pounds. If you're not comfortable with that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, deer can be killed with much less poundage. So don't be concerned about trying to get in the tree stand or out in the backyard and pulling as much weight as you possibly can. You wanna make sure and have a smooth draw. You see too many people online or whatever it might be, trying to be a tough guy and you know pointing straight at the sky and just pulling back as hard as they can and you can just tell they're not comfortable and it's too heavy, too much poundage for them. And you want that to be as smooth as draw as possible because trust me, once November gets here and it's 20 degrees outside and you have a nice mature whitetail walk in front of you and you got that adrenaline pumping and you're frozen cold from sitting there all day, you wanna make sure you can get that bow pulled back as easy as possible and be confident in your shot. The experts there at the local bow shops are gonna be able to help you out with things like axle length. So axle length would be from this cam to this cam. Something shorter is better suited for 
typically hunting out of a tree stand because it's easier to maneuver. But with it being shorter overall, it's a little bit harder to hold on target and requires more practice. Uh, you have longer axle bows, which are a little bit more forgiving and a little bit easier to hold on target. So you just gotta find out what suits you best and what interests you the most in your style of shooting and uh, hunting. And then you've got things like brace height, which would be the distance from your grip to your bowstring at rest. Uh, the shorter, the lower that distance, the faster the bow is going to be, a little bit more aggressive. Once again, that's a little bit harder to shoot, not quite as forgiving, but you just got to find what suits you best and what you're most comfortable with. And they are there to help you fit those needs. And if it's a good bow shop, they'll put you in many different setups, keep an eye on you while you're shooting, kind of take notes, get an idea of what fits you best, get feedback from you while you're shooting, and then you can compare, you know, three, four, five different bows all in different configurations to see what you're most comfortable with. If you're just starting out, I would probably try to keep your brace height somewhere around seven inches. That seems like kind of a good average and not too aggressive, but also still a fairly quick bow and definitely quick enough to kill a whitetail buck. Me personally, I love shooting a compound bow. I don't have anything against crossbows. I just think there's more skill required in shooting a compound bow. There's just such a huge difference between shooting a buck with a gun or a rifle compared to a compound bow. It's just night and day difference and there's nothing like taking a mature whitetail with a compound bow. At the end of this video, I'm gonna put a link directly to one of my videos in regards to what release to use. I have a video on comparison between a thumb release and a trigger or a wrist release. So you can click on that here at the end of the video. I really am excited about this video series. I think there'll be a lot of people out there, a lot of viewers that will get a lot from this video series. And I hope you guys think the same as well. Here to help you guys out, as always, happy hunting, be safe, see ya, bye.